We're going to start out this morning with a, with a member of all of us, uh, and that's our Commissioner of Agriculture. Steve Troxell, you know, has served as our Commissioner of Agriculture for a number of terms. I'm not even going to say you any four, four terms. Four terms. It's four ter I thought it was four terms. But uh, you know our Commissioner of Agriculture. He works tirelessly every day. He works tirelessly every day for the farmers and the, and the rural communities of this state. And I will say this, in his presence, in the presence of you, had it not been for the commissioner's leadership, we wouldn't have gotten that $250, $40 million from the legislature that we felt the effects of. We felt it in North Carolina. And the commission. <laughs> no other state, no other state had that kind of impact. The commissioner was telling me, a big equipment dealer told him, in South Carolina they were repossessing farm equipment left and right. In North Carolina they didn't do that because of, because of that, that, that payments that we got from the state legislature. And so thank your state legislators. We got some I'm going to introduce here in a few minutes. With that, let's give a Farm Bureau welcome to our Commissioner of Agriculture, Steve Troxel. Commissioner. Good morning. good morning. It's good to see all of you here. I always look forward to today when people from all over the state are in one place and I can talk to them and greet them and uh, see friends that have uh, been able to uh, get to know over these past uh, 20 years that I have run for office and uh, I thank you for all you do every day. Uh, when I stood here last year, little did we know what we were in for. Uh, we knew we had problems. We had low commodity prices. Uh, the tariffs uh, war was just beginning. Uh, we knew we had to work on those issues, but we had no idea that uh, tropical, that uh, Hurricane Florence and then Tropical Storm Michael would come busting through North Carolina, and, and Florence just didn't want to leave. She fell in love with North Carolina like everybody else and just stayed here and stayed here and stayed here. And I can tell you that uh, all the hours that I spent in helicopters and, and on the ground, uh, I came back completely distraught from what I saw. And I guess it's uh, having been in disasters myself, not of that magnitude, but uh, I do know what it feels like to lose money. Uh, I do know what it feels like to, to look at tomorrow and wonder if there's going to be a, another day in farming. So uh, we came back and uh, Larry and I and Peter, uh, we talked and, and we pretty much knew if we didn't get something done, we were gonna lose a lot of farmers in the state of North Carolina. And I always had faith that the federal government would come through and, and help us at some point, but things uh, pretty much move at a snail plate pace in Washington. And uh, I anticipated then that uh, it would be much later this year when we got some help from the feds than, than than it would be, and it, it turned out to be that way. Uh, that help is on the way. Lynn McBride and his staff at uh, FSA are, are going to be administering some programs, uh, and we hope to be able to win a uh, a block share grant from the USDA to be able to administer another disaster program in North Carolina, and I feel good about that. Uh, our application is in. Uh, it's got to be reviewed, uh, probably edited, and, and then approved. But uh, we've requested $316 million to go into that uh, disaster program. So we'll cross our fingers, and we hope that turns out well, and uh, we will do what we can do. Uh, I could never be prouder of the partnerships that it took to get this disaster program together uh, to get the money out. Uh, it was a, truly a partnership among the commodity organizations, the, the extension service, all of our federal partners. We couldn't have done it without FSA, certainly, and I thank Lynn for that. Farm Bureau, uh, we work with them every day on how this would be done. Uh, and and, and I, it was successful. Uh, the people in the department were unbelievable, the hours that they put in. Evan Davis is here today that works in farmland preservation. He was a big part of that effort. DeWitt Hardy led it uh, in uh, farmland preservation, Laura Brookshire. Uh, but David Smith took the lead on this and uh, stayed on top of it. Dr. Sandy Stewart was instrumental in designing the program, and the program wasn't perfect. Uh, we knew to, to have it happen in a way that it was going to help get the money out the door in a hurry. 
that it would be have to be based on averages and averages is what it is it's average and there are going to be people on both sides of that line but uh, to get that money out uh, under the goal that I had we'll start getting that money out in January uh, we had to do it that way but it was an unbelievable effort uh, I can't thank our legislators enough uh, in today's politically charged uh, environment that we live in uh, it was unanimous out of the Senate committee, uh, unanimous out of the House committee, unanimous on the Senate floor vote, and unanimous on the House floor vote. That, that's almost unbelievable. So that in itself is amazing, uh, and I can never thank them enough for take, stepping forward to, to help us get through this. I went into this year with a lot of optimism. Uh, commodity prices have crept up. Uh, what we needed was good weather. and. We haven't exactly had good weather. Uh, I had high hopes for the crops uh, through the month of June, but then the heat of July has hit. Uh, this week I was with the EPA Region 4 Administrator, and we rode through a lot of eastern North Carolina, and I saw a lot of damaged corn crops, uh, severely damaged in some cases. So we know that's out there, that uh, it's a problem. Uh, we'll, you know, Yogi Berra said it ain't over till it's over, and we'll see how this year turns out, and, and we'll see uh, what goes into the bins and, and how we fare, but we, we've got problems still, and solving those problems is not going to be easy, certainly, but we're going to continue the partnerships that we have and step forward and do everything that we can do to keep this uh, industry successful. Uh, we're at $91.8 billion as far as economic impact. I had hoped we would be at uh, $100 billion by the year 2020, but I've got a secret. Those figures are two years behind. So hopefully uh, I've really got to 2022 when the figures <laughs> really are going to be released. So I hedged my bet just a little bit, and I think we can get there uh, with a little bit of help from the weather uh, and uh, some commodity prices that are favorable uh, and the dollar at some point may be weakening a little bit to help the export trade then uh, maybe things will happen in our in our benefit for a long time uh, I remain uh, optimistic I know the fiber of the people that are in agriculture in the state I know the the leadership and in, in all the commodity organizations and and Farm Bureau we're going to get through it uh, I don't know that we've ever endured in a long time uh, this kind of uh, bad luck and, and bad things uh, happening for year after year, but I think back to having come through the shakeout in the early 80s and 19% interest rates and the things that went on then, so uh, we just got to get through it. Uh, we have no choice. Uh, there's no quit in any of us, uh, certainly not in me, not in Larry. Uh, there ain't no quit in us, so we just put our head down and do what we got to do. Uh, there are things that uh, that I see hopefully will help us. Uh, we're working on some issues in tobacco that uh, that I hope will come to fruition that will help the uh, get the planted acreages back up. I, I think we need to sustain around a 400 million pound tobacco crop to be uh, to be a world player, and probably this year we're under 300,000 acres planted. So uh, I think we can, I th 300, under 300 million pounds, I should say. Uh, so we're going to work to try to get that figure back up. Uh, the livestock industry is still the backbone of this state, and and the, the I think the the figures that we saw uh, as far as actual losses. Uh, out of Florence were skewed a little bit because 68 percent of what we do in North Carolina is uh, the animal industry and we the the losses while all losses are bad they were minimal compared to uh, what was out there. Uh, I did have the EPA uh, Region 4 Administrator in this week. Uh, we toured East of North Carolina particularly hog farms and uh, showed them uh, the truth about the hog industry in North Carolina and, and they're fed continually information from uh, the environmental side that uh, is not it's not the truth. Uh, we actually took them to one of the uh, digesters and they walked on top of the lagoon uh, and they were pretty impressed by what they saw. 
So maybe we'll be able to turn uh, misinformation into good information if we work hard at it. I thank you for what you do every day. Uh, I'm thankful to be doing what I'm doing. Uh, it is my intent right now to run for another term. Uh, things change, but uh, right now that's my intent. Uh, there's un unfinished work to be done. So uh, we will do our very best, uh, and I'll do my best if I'm elected again to continue to work for you every day. Larry, uh, this is kind of a sad day for me. Uh, I want to just thank you for all your friendship and support during the years, and uh, it's meant a lot, I can tell you that. We'll talk about that later. All right. <laughs> thank all of you.